It was a historic day in America as Donald Trump became the first former U.S. president to be arraigned on criminal charges. He pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records as part of what the Manhattan DA says that it was a conspiracy to undermine the 2016 election through a series of hush money payments designed to stifle claims that could be harmful to his candidacy. All right, and the president just left Manhattan a short time ago, headed back to Florida where he is expected to make a statement tonight. This is video of his plane as it was on the run way before taking off from LaGuardia Airport within the past hour. We have a team of reporters covering all aspects of this breaking story. We begin with Fox 5's Morgan Mackay, who was part of the select few reporters in the courthouse who were witnessing history unfold. Morgan, walk us through Trump's arraignment, what happened, how it was received in the courthouse. Stephen Natasha, former President Donald Trump, entered the courtroom with his signature red tie and pled not guilty to 34 counts of filing false business records in the first degree. Now, the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg said he did so in order to benefit his own presidential campaign. Now, each count carries a maximum of four years in prison, although if he were to be convicted, a judge would allow him to be sentenced to probation, or at least he could. Trump is due back in court on December 4th. Now, his lawyers push back on this, saying this has just cost the city an immense amount. I mean, around 35,000 NYPD officers were on standby today, not including court officers. But the judge denied this request and said Trump has to be back in court on January 4th. Now, the district attorney's office brought up at least two issues, the first one being Trump's rhetoric on social Social media. Trump posted, quote, death and destruction if he were to be charged. He also posted about this being World War III. So the uh, defense is arguing that this was Trump's freedom of speech. They pushed back, saying that obviously he's frustrated. The judge issued a warning. They're not doing a gag order just yet. So Trump can still post to social media, but they're issuing a warning as of right now to tamp down the rhetoric on both sides. The other issue is Joe Tacopina. Trump's lawyer. Now, Stormy Daniels reached out to Joe Tacopina, and she's at the center of this all. And she reached out in order to attain him as her lawyer, and she forwarded him a piece of paper. Now, Tacopina says this: the information in this piece of paper has already public. It's already been in her book. So he said it's not that pertinent and related to the trial. Now, the judge didn't take Tacopina off the case, but he told Trump that if he wanted to get a different lawyer, he has the right to. Now, inside the courtroom, everybody was watching patiently for, for this trial. It started a little bit late at around 2.30. It was expected to start at 2.15, and it lasted until 3.30. Now, we did speak to Joe Tacopina, Trump's lawyer, briefly after the arraignment, and the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg held a press conference right after. Defendant repeatedly made false statements on New York business records. He also caused others to make false statements. The defendant claimed that he was paying Michael Cohen for legal services performed in 2017. This simply was not true. Today's unsealing of this indictment shows that the rule of law died in this country. Because ev while everyone is not above the law, no one's below it either. And if this man's name was not Donald J. Trump, there is no scenario we'd all be here today. Please understand that based on these charges. Now, getting inside the courthouse today was tough. There was at least two different metal detectors. We went up to the 15th floor where Trump was being arraigned. There was about 30 officers just on that floor alone. But again, it was a uh, history, watching history unfold today. Stephen Natasha.